Today we will be learning one of my favorite signature moves, the rope dart windmill. I was inspired to adapt this move into my flow after watching my friend Ryan Vollmer do it with double staves. This is a great example of how roped artists can get inspired to create new moves by watching other types of flow art or dance. Since this move is not originally designed for roped art, I feel that it is important to note that there is no correct way to do it. I will be breaking down the way that I like to execute it, so please feel free to change it in any way that feels comfortable and fits your style. I will start by teaching the standing windmill and finish by teaching the pivoting windmill. Let us begin. First, we step into wheel plane. We grip our rope about forearm's length with our lead hand. The anchor hand gathers the extra slack. We start swinging the dart away from the ground, also known as an upswing. Now we are going to let go of our rope with our lead hand so that it lands on our forearm. It should land right in the crevice where our forearm meets our bicep. Next, we are going to reach down and scoop the rope with our lead hand so that it is resting on the top of our palm. Check to see if your grip matches this one. Now we close our grip and make sure that our arm is fully extended and our dart and lead hand are pointed at the ground. We then loosen our grip with our anchor hand and slide it up the rope so that our anchor arm is also fully extended and our anchor hand is pointed at the sky. Once we reach this point, we grip the rope tightly so that the rope in between our two hands is taut. Okay, now we are ready to start our windmill. If we are standing with our feet rooted to the ground, we can now start raising our lead hand in front of us while simultaneously lowering our anchor hand behind us. We continue this motion until our hands have switched. Now, let's complete the circle, ending where we started. That is a standing windmill. Let's try to do a couple of rotations. If we want to get really fancy, we can also release the rope so that it lands on our shoulder and catch the dart on the next rotation. If we want to execute a pivoting windmill, we start in the same position. We raise our lead hand and lower our anchor hand the same way we did in the first variation. If we pretend that our hands are rotating like the hands of a clock, our anchor hand will now be pointed at 6 p.m. and our lead hand will be pointed at 12 a.m. To execute a pivoting windmill, we now turn our body from wheel plane to wall plane. If we are right-handed, we turn our feet clockwise. If we are left-handed, counterclockwise. Simultaneously, our anchor hand and lead hand will turn in the same direction our body is turning so that they are now pointed at 9 p.m. and 3 p.m. Finally, we continue the same rotation with our body and arms. Every time our arms rotate 15 minutes on our imaginary clock, our feet and body are turning from wall plane to wheel plane in the same direction. Eventually, we get back to the same place we started. Both our body and our arms should have completed a full 360 degree turn. Let's practice this step. After fully understanding the mechanics of this step, we start to speed up our turn. The eventual goal is to be able to spin our body fast enough that the rope stays straight throughout the whole move. We can pivot our feet in whatever way feels comfortable. I like to turn on one foot so that my pirouette is a little bit faster. Okay, finally, we need to find a way to exit out of our windmill. In my opinion, there are probably a million ways to escape. My favorite way is to exit out with an elbow shot while implementing a pivoting windmill. I start with my lead hand pointed at 12 a.m. and my anchor hand pointed at 6 p.m. I do a 540 degree turn so that I land in wheel plane facing the opposite direction. I then grab some rope with my lead hand and use the momentum of the turn to execute an elbow shot. If you are confused with this step, please re-watch my elbow shot tutorial. The link is in the description. Okay, we should now have everything we need to complete the entire sequence. The more comfortable we get, the more easily it will flow. 
Please do not hesitate to play around with this move and see what variations you can come up with. It is my opinion that the less formal moves probably have the most potential for creativity. Good luck!